Well, folks, um, welcome to another of our Multi Hog Solutions webinars. Uh, today is the walkthrough of the Iliad 70. And we're just going to hold fire as we do each week to uh, just allow everyone who is uh, registered to join in. So that will take just a couple of minutes. I'm just going to mute Rachel for a moment. Yeah. So you can see in the inset box there, we've got our colleague Marcus Overman, who is uh, on the Gold Coast at the Boatworks uh, up there at uh, Coomera. And he is uh, going to walk us through this impressive Iliad 70 today. Uh, we'll also have a guest appearance from our uh, from Mark Elkington. He's also going to be joining uh, Marcus to uh, answer a few questions. So we'll just hold fire for a few minutes or a, a, another half a minute or so. We'll just let those who've uh, registered join in. And then we'll uh, commence this walkthrough. We're very lucky today. The weather on the Gold Coast is perfect. Uh, very little wind, which is going to help a lot in uh, being able to hear Marcus as he walks us around the yacht. Um, and lots of sunshine. So, so we'll just... Um, I'll just flick now into the next screen, as we have done each week with the, uh, or sorry, each time we do these webinars, you are allowed to ask questions. And the way for you to do that today is just click on the Q&A box and you can type your question or comment. And we'll then endeavour to answer the, your questions uh, either as we're going, if it's relevant to uh, the area of the boat or the, uh, the topic of discussion at the time, or we'll hold your question over until the end where we're going to sit down with Marcus and Mark and have a Q&A session and talk more broadly about the Iliad product uh, and uh, what's happening in the world of Iliad in terms of what's under construction now and, and uh, what new models are on the drawing board and so on. So we'll be definitely having a very uh, good and robust Q&A at the end of the walkthrough of the 70. Uh, just while we're uh, there, we'll just uh, mention that our next webinar is on the 31st of July, and that's a, a useful one for those who are looking to purchase brokerage multi holes That will also be there on the Gold Coast, uh, and we'll be doing a, a, a session on tips for purchasing a pre-owned multi hole and that'll in, include some walking uh, aboard some of those brokerage boats that are there on the Gold Coast, and uh, some tips from our experienced brokerage team. Uh, two weeks after that, we're going to be doing a walkthrough of the MY44 Power Catamaran on the 14th of August. A uh, couple of weeks after that, I know there's a lot of our cruising sailors who might not be with us today to look at the Iliad, but there is a number of them who are waiting for that first aid for cruising uh, webinar on the 28th of August. And then in September, we're going to be having a uh, session with our friends from Mariner Boating Holidays. And they're going to uh, give us a, a great session after their many, many years of experience of uh, cruising the Greek islands and the Eastern Aegean and the coast of Turkey. So that'll be a, a, a really good one for those who post COVID would uh, like to get back to doing some sailing or, uh, or chartering around the, uh, the Mediterranean. So my name is Greg Boller. I'm the New York Sales Manager for Multi Hole Solutions and helping today of, as usual with the uh, camera work and the production behind the scenes is Rachel. And uh, we've got Mark Elkington with us today. He'll be, uh, we'll be bumping into him as we walk around the boat, the uh, CEO of uh, Iliad Catamarans. Uh, Mark has uh, been a colleague of mine for many years and he's uh, been importing the FP Catamarans and founded uh, Multi Hole Solutions. And he's invested a lot of energy in this last couple of years in uh, bringing the Iliad product to market and uh, a huge effort and one that you'll um, be very happy to see as we walk through the Iliad 70 today. And then Marcus Overman is going to be showing us through the boat today. He is our power boat expert, our power yacht expert. Uh, he's been in the industry also for many years. Uh, I've again also had the pleasure of knowing Marcus for at least 20 years and for the uh, uh, Quite a while he's been living up in Thailand and moved back to Australia um, about a year ago. Uh, and he was very successful selling some uh, large power boats and sailing yachts in Thailand whilst there. 
and he's come back. We're very fortunate to have Marcus joining our team. Uh, and he uh, brings a wealth of experience. And he's based on the Gold Coast, hence why he's going to be showing us around the Iliad catamaran today. So just before we cut across to uh, Marcus, uh, the power catamaran range of Iliad, we have the, uh, the Iliad 50, 60, 70, and then the 90 is coming soon. Uh, we have obviously the 50 and the 70 in Australia at the moment and the 60 on its way. Uh, so we'll be talking more about that. It was launched at the Sanctuary Cove Boat Show in 2019. Uh, it was a very successful launch when we had the first of the uh, Iliad 50s on show. And then last year at the uh, Sydney Boat Show, we had the Iliad 70 on display. And since launch, there's been nine of these Iliad powered catamarans sold. And they've had, uh, the, the Iliad brand has really uh, launched onto the market strongly and is well known now in such a short time. And we've uh, had great feedback from the existing owners and also uh, from the those who are buying the Iliads as we as we move along, uh, who are enjoying the buying experience and the ability to customise and the ability to work closely with Marcus and Mark and the design team and, and really design a boat that fits and, uh, each, each buyer and also ticks the boxes that they would like to have ticked. Uh, so why an Iliad? It's the power of choice, it's safe, it's comfortable. It's a long range blue water power catamaran. Uh, the longest range in the market, in fact, at 2,500 nautical miles to 6,000 nautical miles, depending on uh, the speed that you choose to uh, cruise at. Uh, as I just said, it's all about the customization, the ability to reflect the individual styles and needs with layouts, with equipment, with the interior and the timber finishes, fly bridges or non fly bridges, enclosed or not enclosed. So there's a lot of customization uh, ability with the Iliad product. Uh, it's protected, the, the fact that you can ground the yacht if necessary, uh, and it's uh, the skegs definitely protect the, uh, the, the propellers and the rudders, so that works in the favour of uh, making it a very good boat for long range cruising. And the uh, Iliad hulls are manufactured with the all vinyl ester infused hulls, um, which means that there's a, a, a very strong product and a very consistent product through the process of infusion. And it's uh, now time to, uh, to join Marcus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the share of this screen and I'm going to turn off my video and that will uh, bring Marcus into full view. And I'm going to uh, unmute you Marcus so that you can uh, say hello and, and uh, once I work that out, and now we'll hand over to you, Marcus, to give us a walk through of the Iliad 70. Thanks, Greg, and welcome everyone to today's webinar, which is the walkthrough of the stunning Iliad 70. Um, we at Multi Health Solutions are very proud to represent this exciting new brand, and I'm looking forward to showing you around. So let's go straight into it. Before we jump aboard i just want to and as this is a video i just want to try and express the size of the boat so during the, the tour i'll be mentioning dimensions and so on and the first one is um the amount of free board the boat has so this i'm 1.8 meters high i'm standing a little bit off the water on the marina dock but the free board on this boat is 2.7 meters high so what that does is it gives the boat very good bridge clearance up of above the water and it also has great volume inside on the lower deck so good headroom in the cabins and as you'll see when we go aboard there's uh, so many uh, there's a lot of space for the designers and the owners to choose what they want so if we step on the platform here here you'll be able to see a better example of the bridge Bridge deck clearance, so it's about 1.3 meters from the water to the bottom of the bridge deck, which means the boat is very good in um, all kinds of weather. So it's a nice, comfortable ride. You don't get uh, much slamming, and um, it's something that not enough power cats on the market these days uh, have. So um, that's a real feature um, of this boat. 
I'm standing on the hydraulic platform, which is, uh, you can see the very heavy duty gear, lifting gear. So this can lift up to 600 kilos for a large tender. And when we go into the fly bits, there's also um, a David crane up there to, for other toys, other tenders, but um, we'll get there shortly. One thing that we're very proud of with Iliad is they're very practical boats. They're built um, by sailors, for sailors, and for use for long passage making. And if you're living aboard long periods of time, you need a lot of storage. So in a lot of the production boats, full production boats you see, they just don't have enough storage. So um, for example, this whole transom is deep lockers. Um, this one, for example, is fitted out as a dive filling station, so we can store six tanks. Uh, and we have a compressor filling point here. We can hang BCDs, wetsuits, um, everything you need for for scuba diving. The the compressor also acts handy. is also handy for um, blowing up any inflatable toys. Um, Water slides, you can even have a water slide off this boat. It stands very high off the water and it'll be uh, great for the kids. So moving up into the cockpit, I'll just point out that this is uh, 1.2 meters wide, this um, stairway up. So you've got a huge amount of space. Um, we'll go straight to the foredeck. Um, on the way, again, We'll point out that it's 750 millimeters um, on the side decks and nearly a meter between the, uh, the bulwark and the superstructure, um, which is very safe, 600 millimeters high bulwarks. So great for little kids or anyone moving around the boat. Being a cat is very stable, and so it's a very easy boat to get around. Um, we've got the side opening doors on both sides of this boat. So that's handy if you're rafting up to other boats or you're at a fuel wharf or a jetty, um, that kind of situation. So I'll head up to the forward deck. The large saloon windows here, you'll see when we get inside, you'll get an appreciation for the, amount of, for the panoramic views you get from inside the boat. So That's a really wide deck there, Marcus, yeah? Yeah, I mean, it's wouldn't need any wider, that's for sure. So on the it's a you might call it a cozier foredeck to a sailing cat, for example. But we have the, the superstructure um, is quite forward on these, these design boats, which you'll see once we go inside as um, great advantages with, with what we can do to the interior of the boat. So this um, this four deck area has a nice C-shaped lounge, which is very comfortable in the afternoon when at anchor um, or even underway. Um, this little table here doubles as access to the anchor chain to attach the bridle for anchoring. And then the windlass and the, and the um, chain is uh, situated down here. So there's 100 meters of chain and an 80 kilo ultra anchor on this boat. You have foot controls here for the anchor winch, but of course you have uh, remote controls at both the interior and library helm. So um, under the teak coffee table there, Marcus, did you say that's access to a bridal setup, is it? Yeah, so it's forward locker, so it's a good place to keep the tender fuel, or yes. jet ski fuel. But here we can have access to the bridle to attach to the chain once you've anchored and just settling in for the night. Okay, so you thanks. very rarely need to go into the, um, the lockers under the sea because the chain piles up. It's a very deep locker. There's no real reason to get in there. Uh, but here you will get into uh, as part of the anchoring process. These two front lockers here um, give access to huge, huge um, storage lockers. So they're a good place to keep defenders, lines, that kind of thing. You can see this boy comes right out here to the bow. Um, while we're up here, you can, you can appreciate how high we are off the water. We're nearly three meters. So this handrail is nearly three meters off the water. So 
a very dry boat in most conditions. Uh, we have while, while, you're, while you're talking about dry boat in most conditions, we just had a question from one of our uh, participants there. Uh, asking, do you need storm shutters on those windows in rough ocean crossings? But I, I, I would hazard that the answer is no, because you've got such good clearance as it is, or? Yeah, no, we don't need to. These boats are certified C Ocean, category A, and they're all tempered glass, safety glass. There's, uh, there's no requirement at this stage. I mean, unless you were to do some um, serious Southern Ocean crossings and your insurance company might uh, might have that discussion, but in general use, no. Thank you. Uh, there's great storage under here for, you know, deck washing gear, that kind of stuff. See the size of the bollards here? It's all heavy duty equipment. You know, it's a 45 ton boat, this one. Um, the dimensions are 21, 20, just over 21 meters long, 9.15 meters wide. She has a draft of um, 1.25 meters. And um, actually the footprint of this boat is the same size as a single tennis court. Not a double tennis court, but the single tennis court. So if you can imagine that, that's the kind of volume that we're dealing with. Very good. Um, just you'll notice another hatch here. So this is a huge void under here, which can be designed as a crew cabin, captain's cabin, and we could do the same on the other side. So we'll um, move down to the cockpit. So just while you're doing that, I'll just ask all of our viewers, if you have any questions as Marcus is walking around, please type them in the Q&A box and uh, we will attempt to answer them as we're going or, or at the end. So if you, if you want him to slow down or if there's something you see that you would like him to discuss, just please let us know. Yeah, please do. So the mooring capstans here with foot switches on both sides. As we said, very heavy um, docking gear. Um, moving around into the cockpit, we have the gas locker in here. This particular client has chosen um, gas barbecue and gas stove. So we can hold up to three gas bottles, you know, for long, long distance cruising. This boat is really designed for somebody who wants to do long range. It has 7,500 7, litres of fuel. And depending on your engine selection and the speed you go, you can get up to 4,500 nautical miles range. So it really is uh, designed for someone who wants to do a lot of miles. So now, Marcus, we've also had a special request that to make sure we do go in and show uh, the engine rooms. So well, we, uh, we, we might as well do that right now. Okay, so good. I will jump down into the starboard engine room here and then Rachel will pass me the phone. And then I'll explain a little bit about what equipment we have on board. Thank you. Okay, can you hear me? Yep, all good. Okay, so we have the boat cub standard with Volvo uh, D8, 600 horsepower shaft drive engines. But we're this seeing you, we're seeing you, Marcus. So you might want to spin it around. <laughs> wow. There you That's go. <laughs> Thanks for that tip. <laughs> so uh, these, this boat's actually been fitted with D11, 725, Volvo direct drive shaft engines. So this boat will do a top speed of 22 knots, cruising at around 17, 18 knots. So once again, you have a wide um, engine selection with Iliad from 600 horsepower up to um, 800, I think is the maximum, maximum um, recommended. So on this side of the boat, we also have the uh, Onan 17.5 kilowatt engine, which has a gas separator here. So what the gas separator does, it, it stops that um, generator noise of the exhaust water coming out. So the exhaust water will come out 
under the under the water and you just get um, the exhaust fumes. The in the back here you can see there's excellent um, access to the steering gear. So hydraulic steering and and then there's a rudder post there you can see so great for servicing and very uncluttered area. Uh, in the back there you can see one of the underwater lights. So there's two on each hull on this particular boat. Um, dive compressor, which we saw the filling point in the transom. So this is where the compressor is fitted. Um, you've got galvanic isolators. Those are the circuit breakers for the 220, um, 220 shore power. This is a unique feature, something that um, the owner, uh, the current owner um, requested, but it's actually a very good recommendation. So this is a firefighting suppression, suppression system. So it can act, this is the fire pump and using these manifold levers, we can use it as a high powered bilge pump in certain areas of the boat and in the engine room of the boat. And it also supplies uh, salt water to a fire hydrant, which is in the cockpit. So that's a nice safety feature. The two engine batteries here and one generator battery there. Those are your fuel shutoffs. Um, automatic fuel, um, automatic fire hydrant system. So that will shut off the fire flaps, which is standard on all those, and, and then shut off the blower system and release the uh, propellant in the, in the fire hydrant. So you've, you've got a few breaker switches down here and you can also access the tank capacities can be monitored down here. So you've got water tanks, fuel tanks, there's four gray water tanks, four black water tanks on board, can all be monitored uh, through here, but also obviously up at the main electrical point, um, uh, electrical board within the boat. One, um, one point worth mentioning is that there's no battery chargers or electric, many electrical systems in here. So the 70 has its own technical room for that, which keeps it nice and dry and, you know, away from the heat of the engine room. So that's a, a good feature of this. And, and, and I see, I see Marcus, there's also obviously a camera in there. So you've got a camera, you'll be able to see the engine room from the wheelhouse here. Exactly. So there's a camera in each engine room and in the cockpit uh, to assist with berthing, etc. And what's so that panel is, there? That's the start stop for the fire hydrant system I explained. Okay, understood. Okay. So in the corner there, there is a fuel site system. So a manual fuel uh, uh, site glass, if you like. So yes. obviously, obviously the boat has its own uh, gauges, but this is a very good backup. And then those uh, realize that you see uh, just remotes for the battery switches. So we can turn the battery switches on and off within the boat and also parallel the batteries if we need to. And not that I need you to, but if I wanted to open that hatch there, what's behind that? On the wall that is access to the fuel tank. Okay, that's very good. So, <clears throat> there oh, you yes. can see the access plate for cleaning or um, if you need to get into the fuel tank. So, if there's not any other questions, I'll pop up. And just before you jump out, so that's all checker plate on, uh, plate on the floor, which is obviously excellent for manoeuvring around and walking. Underneath there, you'd obviously find bilge pumps. Yeah, so there's bilge pumps with their own float switch, switches, switches, sorry. Yeah. Um, and then you've got access to the shaft and the stern tube. Excellent. Thank you, Marcus. Back in Rachel's hands. So Kyle, I know you asked that question about the engine room. Is that sufficient for you there, Kyle, in terms of uh, a good look at that space? So in the other engine room in this boat, we have the hydraulic steering and the water right. maker. Um, apart from that, it's, it's very, very similar. So. Okay. So yeah, so in the port side, the only changes are, as you say, water maker. Yep. And the hydraulic steering. So. 
Yep. What we saw was the slave side, the master in the drive unit is in the uh, port side. Okay. If we get a chance at the end, we might pop in the port engine room, but we'll let you keep going for now. Okay. We might, uh, while we're here, um, this is just another example of the storage within the boat. So the owner was very, was even more meticulous with us about getting as many empty voids uh, usable for him, um, you know, for when he's underway. So um, that's another locker there. So we'll go up to one of the highlights of the boat, which is the uh, flybridge. Gee, we got a perfect day. Yeah, not bad, huh? So, wow, what a space. I mean, this is 48 square meters, which because of the advantages we have with Iliad and the customization possible, you can really do whatever you want up here. We can do an enclosed version where they have sliding doors at the back, um, glass windows, opening windows. So this area will be totally air conditioned and this would be your main driving position. You wouldn't need a, a lower helm in that case. Um, most people in this part of the world, certainly most people will go for this open style, which is, uh, and why not when the weather's like this, 300 days of the year. Um, so this owner has adopted more of a, a lazy kind of lounging style. Some others would get to would have a, a dining table up here. There's a nice um, um, casual bar, which has, which has ice maker and two fridges. The main barbecue is down on the, on the, in the cockpit level. But what we have done with other designs is have the barbecue station and be out here. And as I mentioned earlier, there's a Besanzoni crane here. We can fit a crane that can lift up to 800 kilos. And you have a huge 16 square meter deck space here to store a couple of jet skis, two, two large jet skis, maybe three small ones, um, or one big, very large tender. Um, it's also a good place to keep stand up paddle boards, kayaks, all that kind of, all the toys you want when you're at anchor. Um, in other designs, we've had people prefer only need just the one big tender on the platform, which means we can utilize this space for whatever you want. We've, we've had a jacuzzi in one design, um, a nice big sunbed or a C-shaped lounge with a table. So you know, when you're on a boat traveling, looking up is a very nice place. It's a good view, watching the wake watching the wake of the boat and it's a, it's a lovely area. Of course, we can, we can fit this area with an awning, electric or manual, which would be fitted with poles to make this, you know, a very usable and um, quite a nice place to be on board. And listen, Marcus, is that the same as a 50 where the railings pop out at the back there to help load and unload your watercraft? Yeah, that's right. So these are removable. So just so the crane doesn't have to lift up too high, these are all removable, they store in the corner there, and it just makes bringing the tender on and off as, uh, as simple as possible. Very good. Obviously, you can see the several holes in the deck. So that's obviously so we can, um, different combinations of the cradle and the size of the boat that you have. You know, you can choose to have it like this or another system, a sliding system. It's, really up to you. Uh, we have the life raft here, which is a good place to keep it out of the way, but still accessible if needed. And just before you go back inside there, just up on the uh, roof there, tell us about the electronics on the roof there. So on this particular boat, we have uh, KVH track vision satellite internet and satellite TV. So this boat's equipped with Foxtel um, TV. There's the 48 nautical mile open array Raymarine digital radar and uh, the Fleur night vision camera. Also on the top, which, can't, which we can't see, is um, six or eight um, 
solar panels. So solar panels actually keep the batteries charged up nicely. You very rarely need to plug the boat into shore power or have the generator running just to, to keep things charged. Generators you would use obviously for heavy uh, items like the air conditioning and um, um, water makes and things like that. Very good. So back into the flybridge, into the lounge area. This, this particular boat has a nice ice box here. You've got your two fridges that I mentioned. That's a nice little feature. There's great storage underneath here that you can store cushions or um, whatever you need, deck cleaning gear. On some of the boats that we're designing right at the moment, the people on the 70, we've done an internal staircase. So the staircase will actually come out in this corner of the flywheel. So under the, under the cover of the hardtop and fully protected. So you'll come out looking up. Um, so you won't need to come through the cockpit and up the stair and stairs. So it's a, a nice little feature to have both options there. This is obviously the flybridge helm, which definitely in this part of the world is your primary place to drive. You've got excellent views. We're standing about seven to eight meters off the water right now. So you've got really good um, views as a helmsman. We have the double, double bench seat for the helmsman. We have the um, two large screens, Raymarine. You can fit any electronic package you like to this boat. If you like Simrad, Garmin, b and whatever you like um, with Iliad, you have the choice uh, to do what you want. So we can, make, we can also make this dash, redesign this dash if you want it a little bit higher or a little bit wider or you want it um, covered in leather stitched, we can do that or carbon. That's the freedom of choice with Iliad. So, you know, you've got all your navigation gear, your engine diagnostics, uh, two bow thrusters on this boat. So one in each hull. Um, bottles here, VHF radio, and flow camera, searchlight, stereo, everything you need, really. Very good. Okay, so we've been going for about uh, 30 minutes now. So we'll probably, uh, when you're ready, we might head in and have a look at the uh, interior. Of this yeah, boat. let's do that. Again, folks, if you've got any questions for Marcus, please uh, present them and we'll, uh, we'll endeavor to answer. Someone has asked about the price. We will come to that. <laughs> so before we go into the, the interior, this is obviously the cockpit. You've got 30 square meters of space to use here. Um, this is, on this particular boat, this is the main dining area. Um, as I mentioned before, no real formal dining upstairs, but this is a lovely place. Uh, we have the blind here, you know, when the sun gets low in the afternoon, this drops down to make this still, you know, a very uh, usable, friendly space. This corner of the of the cockpit here lends itself straight to the galley so it's a good uh, breakfast bar type arrangement uh, we have a barbecue on this particular boat and a commercial grade ice maker just here so again you are in your options are endless what you choose to do here um, you can uh, redesign something completely different you can have a wet bar um, there's several different options a nice feature um, of this boat is we have a day head here. So we've got a shower and a toilet. So if you have large groups of people on board and people are swimming and having fun in the water, they can just come in and use this toilet rather having to go through the boat. Excellent. On the, on the deck here, we've got huge locker spaces. This one in particular is uh, a bit of a mess at the moment, but it's uh, as it's a I insulated fish bin. So if you're doing any fishing, you could store the fish in there. That's drainable and has some water access, fresh water access. So moving into the main salon of the boat. Who have we got there? 
I'll introduce you to Mark Elkerton, who's the CEO of Iliad. Thanks, Marcus. Welcome aboard. Thank you. And uh, just got to say thank you to Multi Health Solutions for their um, great efforts in uh, selling seven Iliads uh, since we launched the brand 18 months ago. And uh, excited, we've got some very interesting customers. They want to create some amazing things in their boat. So we're yeah, well really that's that's the freedom that uh, Iliad offers. It's, I I get contacted all the time by people who have been looking around on the market for several years for a boat, so they like what Iliad offers offers them with that freedom. They can build their own boat to a point. Well, they they, they seem to know what they want. They're very specific about uh, the dying area being aft or full, mm. or uh, you know the, the uh, galley being up or down. Mm. Uh, it depends on how they use it. Yes, and uh, yeah. interesting here. I'm looking at this one, you know, up to 12 uh, guests with two crew. And with a, you know, it's amazing what you can fit in those boats once our design team kind of listen, listen to your feedback from your customers. And, uh, you know, the compromises are always there. We yeah. always know that. Um, you can see some of the uh, compromises in trying to achieve, you know, the best outcome. I don't think there's any perfect boat. Mm. Layout, uh, something always juice, doesn't it? You yeah. want a, an extra bathroom, but a then, then you lose a bit of cabin space or you lose a little bit of storage space exactly. or something. But um, yeah, you look, I, I'm uh, really enjoying uh, the, um, the you know the process that we've been going through since we started Iliad. Uh, and it was from feedback from our customers that ultimately uh, started the brain. We couldn't find a boat that fitted anyone. Yeah, and we had many people sitting on the fence, uh, uh, waiting for something to come along that had the customization of the range, uh, the choice of engines, or the choices that we offer with the uh, catamarans, and uh, the success of the of your work with multi color solutions has been uh, very surprising. You know, to have uh, nine boats ordered, uh, seven from our Asian Pacific dealer themselves. And uh, we really um, are looking forward to building these boats for you. So, um, yeah, it's been a so what we what we might do, Marcus, we might come back and have a chat with you and Marcus at the end, if that's okay. That's fine, and, uh, uh, Greg, not a problem. And uh, as I might just just point out, what you're going to see on this boat, uh, if I can show you, this has got the master cabin on the main deck, where the boat we're building the seventy for the current customer. They wanted a forward lounge area with a bathroom. Uh, which is like a day bathroom. The layout is exactly the same otherwise. And the storage area, uh, they're converting this into storage. Below the stairways, we have a bathroom. So they've converted that bathroom to here and the storage there. So just, just an example of the things that are pe people are doing with, uh, with the layouts and the designs. So look, please have a look through the boat with Marcus and I look forward to talking to you a bit uh, later on. Okay, thanks, Mark. Okay, Marcus. So in the main saloon area, um, if you combine this area and the master cabin, which we're going to show you in a, in a minute, this is uh, nearly 65 square meters of, uh, of space. So you can choose to do whatever you like here, which is a, a really uh, uh, exciting thing. Some people prefer to have the galley in the front. Some people prefer to have the galley aft. So this, um, this particular black yeah, there's a nice country galley, as they call it in the US. Nice open social family galley. There's um, the lounge that we you saw earlier. Again, no dining table. That's that's um, that's primarily used in the cockpit. So you have the 55 inch flat screen TV in the galley bench here. Um, two I'll wide. Step out of your way, folks, so you can have a look around. But Mark, Marcus, if you. Marcus, if you're watching that TV, does it just stay in that static position, yes? Yeah, so it doesn't pop up or come out, it's just fixed there. But you could have it popping up. We could have it popping up, we can, hey, we can have it drop down from the ceiling if you wish, there's uh, endless opportunities. So um, we can, with this sofa, we can, have a, we can convert it into a, a big bed, if you like. Um, the headroom, I don't know if you noticed, the headroom in, in these areas is 2.2 metres high. So um, you've got uh, a lot of space. I mentioned earlier the, the windows, the salute windows. So you can, uh, I don't know if you can appreciate it on the video, but you have 
um, excellent views all around the boat, which allows for a lot of natural light to come in. And um, it's a really fantastic place. Even if the weather's bad being inside, you feel like you're outside. No, Marcus, the video does show it. And then they're all electric blinds, are they? Yeah, so these ones are all electric and that's a customized choice. Um, we can have different tints on the window if you prefer. So uh, there's several different options. These are cloth blinds. But we can do um, any ones you like, really. Yes. So just before I finish, some of the galleys will, it has everything you would normally expect in a luxury apartment. So oven, microwave, dishwasher, large fridge, freezer space, and great bench stop space and storage drawers and, uh, and lockers okay. everything. Nice artwork. Yeah, do you like that? That was uh, from a very good friend of mine. <laughs> Ellie Fala. So, another nice feature of the, this current layout, of this actual layout, is the office here. So, if you can imagine this, what a view. I mean, working, doing a few emails, paying a few bills. Um, occasionally, the owners have to do that. So, this is a nice... Uh, really nice feature to the boat. It, again, it's a nice family boat, nice and social. Um, and then if you if you pan up Rachel, you can see in this section of the boat, um, the ceiling height uh, raises up to allow for the pilot house deck. So the pilot house deck is the interior uh, helm, the lower helm. And when you stand here, you really feel like you're in an atrium style. You've got 270 degrees of windows all the way around and it really is uh, something special. So it's about three meters from the floor here to the to the ceiling. You Sometimes you forget you're standing on a 70 foot boat. So moving in, this is a really nice feature of the boat, something that the owner was very um, uh, very adamant about he wanted his master up on the main deck so it has loads of advantages um, you're away from all the engine room noise uh, you're away from any slapping or as boats go past in the night when you're at anchor it's very in the center of the boat it's very still and calm it's you know there's so many reasons why if you can do something like this uh, you, you should do it this um, particular owner wanted maximum space like beam to beam cabin others may choose to have the ensuite up here on this particular boat the ensuite is down on the lower deck but what that does is that offers you you know imagine waking up to this view in the morning it's uh, really something special you have the tv pops up here on the electrical lift um, you've got a nice vanity or makeup desk here Great storage, deep um, and deep hanging lockers here and over on this side. This is a nice little uh, area too. So if you want to get away from everyone, you can sit here, read a book in the afternoon, or if it's just you and your wife on the long distance um, passage, you can sit here and you can have the remote um, autopilot. You've got great visibility from here. It's uh, really is a fantastic um, fantastic little uh, spot here, I like it. So Rachel, we might leave Marcus there and let you pop downstairs with the camera or Marcus take the camera down to the... Uh, to the uh, yeah, that's suite. the idea. Why don't yeah. you go down to the en suite? That's a very private space, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. There's plenty of room in there. Very good. Again, folks, if you have any questions, please type them and we'll, uh, we'll answer them as we go. 
I notice there's also good storage under that bed, Marcus. Great storage under the bed here um, on both sides and, and excellent storage just here, Greg. If I can get that open. <laughs> so under here and all the way through the bridge deck down to the cockpit, you have huge uh, void suitable for, you know, dry storage, water bottles, that kind of thing. So at the moment we, we see carpet over the wooden flooring, but there's access points all the way along. Well, what I also like, Marcus, as, as you've walked through the boat is, even though it's a really bright day there, just all of the uh, LED mood lighting. Yeah, it's, they, the owner has been, it's done a great job with the indirect lighting. It's really a feature of this boat. And I don't think you can underestimate the lighting on, on boats. It really does make, it'll make or break it in a lot of, in a lot of our ways. So this is just an example of the privacy that you get even though it may feel that you're in the middle of the saloon and you're always, people are in and out of your cabin, you have a really good privacy if you want it, when you need it. That's incredible, that has transformed that space. So here we have the main electrical board for the boat with all the breakers, 24 volt boat with 220 volt uh, AC system. Here you have all your breakers. Again, as I mentioned in the engine room, you've got your tank um, levels, screens here. Uh, this is the KVH for the SAT system. And then behind here, so behind this, under this deck, uh, there's another access panel and that's where all those chargers and the batteries and the inverters, all the electrical gear is safely stored in this nice dry cool area. Excellent. So I'll just show you down. Oh, why don't I go up to the pilot house? So yeah. Again, this is a really lovely driving position. You're obviously raised high up on the water. Um, so when the weather's bad, uh, this is the place to be and to navigate the boat from here. You're still in um, touch with everybody uh, on board the boat. So it's a nice social area for dad to be to drive the boat. And or mum. <laughs> this is a... Uh, this particular chair is a, you know, electric. You can move it up and down and backwards and forwards. You have all the, all the instruments uh, that you have on the flybridge plus a couple more. So, what could you, could you could you head up, um, Rachel? Could you head up there just so we can see what Marcus is seeing, yeah, from a, 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 a vision perspective? I got two hundred and twenty-six degree. Panoramic views, and then obviously with the use of your cameras, you can see the back of the boat. And what this owner is actually fitting currently is a yacht controller, so the remote um, controller, so you can be standing anywhere on the boat uh, to manoeuvre coming in and out of a marina or for anchoring. You can be standing on the front of the boat, operating the engines and the thrusters, uh, which is a great, just a great feature, especially this particular boat is run by. Uh, um, a couple, so you can imagine it's quite a big boat to handle. To, so to have that remote uh, it will just make life uh, so but, much more. Easier. But Marcus, if you're passage making and, and running watches, that, that where you are now is just a great spot to be sitting as you're doing those long passages, yeah? Exactly, and with the sofa that Rachel was just on, you'll see is a great little place for your partner or companion to be if you're doing long watches and you need to need somebody on off watch but close by yeah and this this front deck as we see out on the on the from the windscreen here this could we could add more solar to this if somebody wanted to you know maximize the deck spaces for solar that's a, an option of course and you've got full wipers there yeah well we've got one wiper here but more could be fitted 
as I said, this, this boat's been used primarily in Queensland in fair weather sailing. So currently this area doesn't get used so much. The primary space is uh, up, in, uh, up in the fly, but you know, if, if this boat was to go to New Zealand or you know, some colder climates, this would be uh, you know, the primary driving position, I imagine. Or, you, or we could do an enclosed flybridge. We yes. would need, where you wouldn't need this um, pilot house at all. And what we could use this, it's nice to have this deck and we could use this as an office if you like, which would be fantastic. And then we would continue the stairs. If it's an enclosed flybridge, then we would use the internal stairs that would go up through this bulkhead into the flybridge, if that makes and where, sense. And where, the, and where the office currently is, you could then have an ensuite there, yeah? You could have an ensuite there, or we could have uh, wine coolers, or pantry storage, or cold storage, um, cocktail bar, even. Very, uh, very exciting. All the possibilities. So, just in answer to your question, Travis, from the pilot house, can you see the extent of the vessel? So, as Marcus did say there, I think you, you, you might have typed before he said it. You can't see it all, but you can with the cameras, uh, which is fairly common. Uh, practice uh, on, on a vessel of this size. Yeah, that's right. With the use of the cameras and these remote controllers, you get better vision than, than, than what you can get just there. Um, um, but that, you know, it's a fantastic driving, spot, uh, driving position. All right, we need to uh, move along. So you're going to go down and show us some cabins. So if you go down right, I'll follow you. So you can see how many steps down we're going deep down into the into the lower deck. So as I explained at the beginning, that freeboard of the boat now we're deep in the, um, the lower decks. We still have very good headroom, 2.1 to 2.2 meters high. Um, we're on the port side now. So in this layer, we have freezer storage here, a nice little workbench and a space for tools and spares. So you have freedom to do whatever you want with this area. Um, some, some boats we've designed with another day head here. So you have a, a door opening into the, to, the, to a head here, um, which uh, is an option of course. So moving forward first, this is the VIP port forward. So quite a big space. Queen size bed raised high up um, with a nice view through the hull window. Storage underneath the bed, storage along the, um, uh, the inside wall here, a little vanity desk, and behind Rach is the ensuite. Very good camera work, Rachel. Thank you. If you go out there, then I can open the. Thanks, Marcus. So, good size ensuite, very generous shower. Um, you can install, we can install rain showers if you wish. We can have stone backing showers with, you know, indirect lighting like you saw in the master ensuite. Again, and so, yeah. with, so with the water maker, Marcus, no one has to be worried about um, running out of water. You can go in there and have an hour long shower if you want. Absolutely. The boat, this boat has uh, the water makers a capacity of 240 litres per hour. Um, and you can, you can choose to have one on each hull if you wish, if you're using a lot of water. Um, um, but yeah, you, don't, you shouldn't need to worry. You've got 1400 litres of water capacity and then the water maker to keep making more. Under the floors here, we also have more storage space. So into the bilges, we can um, can store more, uh, have more storage space. These are these are two very nice cabins. So this cabin is completely mirrored carbon copy on the other side. So this is a really nice VIP with ensuite. Again, large hull windows um, and raised queen size bed with storage underneath, hanging lockers. In here, we can install, we can fit a lifting TV just here. 
So Marcus, just to interrupt, I can see now why Mark showed us a drawing before where one of the clients is saying, I don't want the master cabin upstairs. I'd rather that to be all living space because this cabin you're in now is really a master cabin on any other boat, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this I don't know the exact dimensions of, of the cabin that, that we're in, but it's, you know, it has really nice views of the water, great storage, and um, it's a master cabin on, on, on many other boats. It's, it's quite unique, the master cabin that we have, that we just saw on this boat. Um, and let's say you decided to keep your master cabin down in the lower deck. Can you imagine the, what you would do with that uh, main deck area? So you could have a big dining table forward or lounge or a galley even put the galley forward and more lounge in the back of the main deck there's a there's a limited choices really and above your head there is that a fire detector yeah so this will be um, a smoke detector or a co2 smoke, yeah. yeah and sorry you've um sorry to interrupt um there rachel can you turn around there's a bathroom there right yeah sorry just give us yeah. And that's all freshwater flush, Marcus. That's correct. Yep. And as I mentioned, there's four black water tanks, four grey water tanks. You have great storage in these drawers under the um, bedside tables. Very good. And once again, really impressive uh, subtle lighting. Notice the recessed handrails with the lighting. Yeah. So the last area of the boat I'll show you is the starboard side um, accommodation. So this is the, the laundry area. So uh, we have a washer dry here, linen cupboard here, um, a broom cupboard, and then a, a nifty little um, ironing board set up. Uh, very good, so just where you belong. Uh, good space saving uh, um, ironing board set up. And obviously more storage, a uh, little table top, I mean a bench top here. So this is a boat that somebody lives on, so they need place to do their do wash their clothes. So it's a nice little nice little area. Forward here we have a the only twin bunk cabin on the boat. So there's four doubles and one twin. We've also got a pullman, single pullman installed on this boat. Um, which, uh, which brings the total number of beds to 11 on board, plus we can add one for the captain. So it's, uh, it's not just the boat, it's a, a little ship, really. I'll let you go in there, yeah. obviously. So just um, as you come out of that bathroom, uh, Rach, could you just hold the camera steady so we can get a better impression of that cabin that you were just in with Pullman and the single? Yeah, sure. So yeah, that's incredible. So that's a, a, a three berth cabin. Yeah. So three berth cabin. And what we have done with other clients is we've reserved this area as a crew area. So we would have a door here. Um, yes. They would also have access from the deck rather than having to come through the saloon, but there would be a door here, laundry, cold storage, um, beds, en suite. Um, so this is an ideal area for, for crew. But, but on this, but, uh, the other option is to put the crew up in the, uh, in the voids further forward, yeah? Yes. So we could do that, um, but a couple of our clients have said that we prefer, you know, sizable accommodation for the crew. Um, they're not using the boat for charter. They're, you know, family style crew. You know, they're very close yes. to the family. So we've uh, we've done a design like that. Very good. So 
the as I mentioned, this the IP is the carbon copy of the one we saw in the other hull. And again, if it was a family with crew, one of those, uh, that cabin there, or the one on the port side, or the forward one, one of them could be done in bunk style if needed, yeah? If, yeah. If, you, then, if, you, had, if you had children or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can do. So, do you think we've covered every area? So, in, in summary, there's four real great entertaining areas. You've got the saloon, the flybridge, the cockpit, and the fore deck. Yes. And then we've got the um, one, two, three, well, obviously the owner's cabin up forward there or the owner's suite. And then you've got three really good double guest cabins. And then you've got that, that area there with the, uh, the two singles in the Pullman. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. five cabins in general. I mean, five cabins in total on this, on this particular design. So tell us about, uh, you've, you've cruised the boat a little bit now, Marcus. Just about the feel of the boat, the sea keeping feel of it. Mark's probably done more cruising on board. I'll, I'll yeah, well, we did a run uh, last week. Mark spent a lot of time on the 50, and uh, I was on this for the for the duration of uh, a photo shoot. You'll see a whole lot of new footage coming out on our website in the, the next week or 10 days. But uh, look, it's uh, you've got to remember a catamaran, it's got the beam and the length uh, that gives you a lot more stability than a monohull. Uh, you know, this is as, as comfortable as a 110 foot monohull at sea. Uh, as Marcus uh, worked out, it's bigger than a small tennis court in volume. Uh, uh, we call a single tennis court, it's 190 square metres. The footprint of this boat's 220 square metres on the water. So it's a very uh, stable uh, platform. Uh, Being a cat, it carves through the waves into a, into a seaway uh, without the lift and drop that you get from a, a, a bigger monohull to a displacement type boat. And uh, it's very sea kindly, um, uh, particularly in a following sea. Uh, you know, we, we, we build a boat that's beachable in emergencies. If you do need to run from a cyclone and you, you can't get out of a, a cyclone or a typhoon, as you call them in the US, um, we uh, have built a boat that is uh, uh, structurally able to be parked up a mangrove swamp or into a beach area and ride out a storm or more particularly to service something in a remote area uh, anodes uh, issues with a prop um, uh, you know yeah whatever you need to deal with so not that we're promoting that we want our boats parked on beaches around the world but it's available to you if you need it and now marcus one thing we didn't cover i don't think correct me if i'm wrong is air conditioning and heating yeah, that's a good point. So this boat has been, it's got two chiller air conditioner plants, 96,000 BTU in total, and then six or seven air handlers throughout the boat. So uh, it's got tropical spec aircon. Um, heating, is it reverse cycle? Or yes. This? Yeah. Yep, 17 through to 27 degrees. So, you know, comfortable in the winter, very comfortable in the summer. And where, where, where in the uh, where in the vessel are the uh, the main aircon uh, systems located? Are they in that port engine room or? The port engine room, yeah. Sorry, that's something I didn't mention earlier. Do you want me to? Do you want to pop in there? No, I tell you what we might do is um um, I'll just ask everyone. Uh, we're just about to start the Q and A. If anyone's got any questions, uh, please type them in now, and we'll endeavour to ask Mark and. Marcus to answer those. Uh, in the meantime, just before we go wandering off, I do have a couple of other uh, questions. What I'm just going to do for a moment though, I'm just going to stop the share screen and just go back to our uh, presentation because I just want to show people and Mark, uh, maybe if Rachel sits beside you while we're doing this and you can see what I'm showing everyone. So I'm just going to stop this, see if I can do this. Okay. <laughs> So just in here, okay, so can you see the screen there, Mark? We've just got uh, some samples or examples of some of your layout variations. Yeah, look, Greg, that's a very good example of a master cabin on the main deck with an integrated ensuite instead of having to go down 
uh, the stairway into the hull, which then provides you with more space for more cabin uh, or a, a bigger crew cabin on the boat. But that's a very good layout. Um, we've actually um, used this layout, uh, particularly for some elder customers who want to basically live on the main deck. Um, they want to drive the boat from the helm station. And you can see we've even incorporated the stairway from yes. the helm station up to the flybridge. So you really don't have to go outside of the boat to access any part of the interior. And I see that you've done away with the office area and turned that into a walk-in rope. Co correct. Uh, well, it's, and it's really a pantry for long-term cruising. So you've got a walk-in pantry or you can use it for clothes storage or any kind of storage. But uh, we, we found that a lot of people wanted a, you know, if you're at three or four months without contact of uh, you know, facilities or services, you need to pack a fair bit of gear away. So yes. that's really a long range uh, pantry. And then this next one? Next one is for, uh, you know, people who want the dining area on the main deck, but not outside like this particular 70. So we've got a dining area in the, where, where I'm sitting in the boat at the moment, facing the galley. Uh, dining for very comfortable for 10. Uh, you can fit 12 if you need it. And then the whole forward area is a, is, is a lazy lounge area with a couple of coffee tables for people to sit around and watch movies. You can blacken the screen, the, that area out, as we showed you with the screens dropping at the front uh, master cabin on this boat. You can black it out and watch it. It's like a theatre in the daytime. Excellent. Very good. And then I'll click through. Uh, then we've got some uh, the enclosed flybridge. Yeah, that's the look yeah. of the enclosed flybridge. So it's full glass closure with a sliding rear door, fully air conditioned with access uh, coming up from the main deck. So great for the Southern Ocean, you know, for your, your people heading down to, towards, you know, the colder climates or Northern Europe uh, or even for the tropics. If, you know, you, you don't want to be exposed to the elements. We've got a real divided buyer group in the market. Some people love the fresh air of the flybridge and want the open clears that we offer like this boat. And some people uh, really don't want the weather. They want everything enclosed. <coughs> okay, so before I come back to seeing you folks on the screen, that there is the, just the, the GA of that uh, enclosed flybridge. So Correct, uh, and that allows a, uh, up to a uh, five metre tender on the aft deck with a 700 kilo crane. Uh, so that, uh, uh, you know, it can be a jet uh, tender, can be a standard traditional rib with an outboard, uh, aluminium tender, whatever you like, as long as you, you keep your weight, uh, uh, your wet weight, uh, no more than 700 kilos. Okay, so now we're back to you. So, um, a couple of other questions, if you don't mind, Mark. Um, we, you've, you've spoken a lot about changes to the interior uh, in terms of uh, cabin layouts and, and colours and steaming. What about the exterior? Uh, you look, the exterior, it's a mould. Uh, you know, our range are built um, out of, uh, with moulds, so the, the look of each boat can't change from the outside. You can have a blue hull or a uh, a red hull or you can have uh, teak decks um, throughout. You can have an enclosed flybridge or an open flybridge, but the mould, the shape of the 50, the 60, the 70, the 90 will be one look uh, that we can't modify the moulds. So it's, it's your internal uh, areas is what you can modify. We, we've done a lot of work on the hulls with these plates. We don't want to start modifying hulls to, to gain another foot for someone if they want extra room. Uh, yeah, as I said, we can't be everything for everyone. Okay. And then another question that's come in is, what would you sort of highlight as the main difference between Iliad and, and say other production power cats of similar size? Look, of course, is the, 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 the enjoyment of being able to create your own individual uh, boat. When you walk on board, you can have your choice of layouts, uh, furnishings, motors, uh, you know, you, you can have a a Caterpillar, you can have a Cummins, a Volvo, a Yanmar, generators you can choose, your electronics you can choose, your appliances, uh, gas, electric, uh, you, you can choose everything you, that's in your mind about how you want your boat to look. So we, the, the big 
difference is the customization and creating a boat for very little more cost. Uh, uh, we, we have a, uh, our production is set up, nothing's a mold in this boat interior, everything, it's an open blank platform uh, when the boat's constructed and we fit the boat out according to uh, the customer's needs. Of course, there's compromise in that because there's structural uh, bulkheads that need to be put in certain places. So there's give and take. Uh, someone might want a, a cabin so long that we can only go uh, a, a reduced length because we need to keep structural integrity in all our boats, of course. But Greg, the other big thing I think uh, with that comes a negative we can't supply. Uh, the numbers of boats like our production um, uh, industry colleagues, uh, that's a great market in itself. You know, we would love to uh, build uh, a dozen boats uh, a month, but uh, that'll be our capacity per annum. I mean, a boat a month is about where Iliad wants to be in the market. We're currently building around six or seven boats a year, and that is a very comfortable place for us. We don't want to go at the pace of the market. We need to go at the pace of our uh, service team and our uh, uh, the, the team of people that get behind every owner. That's the critical uh, business plan with Iliad is we're going to grow at the pace that we can service our customers. Uh, we've, we've turned orders away from Northern Europe and uh, the um, uh, US uh, because we're not ready to be there. But we're coming soon and uh, give us another 12 months and we'll be there. Just on that note, what, what's the unique, what, how do you uh, manage or work with the client in terms of uh, when the, you know, when a client receives a 70 foot uh, motor catamaran like this, it, there's a lot to learn and a lot to understand. How, how do you support them after you've handed over the boat? Uh, what we uh, do, which we find is uh, uh, from, you know, look, we've been doing this for 25, 30 years in playing in the multi hole market. Uh, in all kinds of facets. What we found, it's an investment proactively or uh, reactively. So instead of putting someone on a boat and pushing them off the dock after a, a few days of briefing on board, we uh, give each boat owner uh, a basically a, a, an Iliad representative that stays with them, with the boat uh, for a period of time. The bigger the boat, the more time you get. So that person is fully across the whole operations of the boat and how everything functions and works. And we, it's an educational handover program. Uh, some clients don't need it for as long as we offer. We offer six months for the 70. Uh, it's six months of one-on-one -on -one time. That person can stay on the, in the crew quarters with you on the boat. They can uh, follow the boat around uh, on the land. They can be at the destination you arrive when you're getting there. It's up to you how you utilise that person. Or, or they can just be on the end of the telephone or a Zoom yeah, call if needed. Absolutely. But the critical thing is with, with every boat, it doesn't matter whether we're building a 20-foot uh, you know, runabout or a 200-foot super yacht, every boat has a debugging period. It's yes. uh, production or whether it's customised like uh, we're doing there is a debugging period and we're trying to minimise the downtime of the owner's enjoyment and maximising the enjoyment of getting the boat debugged and functioning. And that takes a bit of time and we find that having uh, the Iliad representative with each boat owner for a, a period of time, you know, a month, three months, six months, depending on the size of the boat, uh, gets the owner up to speed very quickly with how their boat functions. And, and, uh, and let's face it, I mean, we all are responsible for a bit of operator error. We don't turn something on and flatten our batteries or uh, don't prepare something right and damage something. So it creates a great partnership between ourselves and our boat owners that we, we're giving them the best education, the best handover experience that we can, we, 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 that we believe is possible in the market. And listen, Mark, what have you got currently under construction? Uh, currently, we've got um, uh, we've just got a little fishing boat carrying past here. There's a bit of background noise, so that's okay. Yep. Um, we've got uh, at the moment a seventy under construction, which is with the forward lounge uh, and dining room in this area. Uh, we've got uh, uh, two sixties, one under construction, one will start to lay up uh, in around September. That'll be a great boat. I'm looking forward to showing the market. That's a uh, it's actually a 62 foot overall. 
it's not a lot smaller than the, uh, the boat that we're on now. Uh, of course, you get the much more generous cockpit size and flybridge size, but it's a really well thought through project. We've got a, a couple of 50s under construction, one's just being ready for handover on the end of July in this month. And the next boat will, that'll come to the Gold Coast. And the next boat uh, will go to Sydney, uh, Australia. So at the moment, all the boats being constructed are going to the Asia Pacific region. As I mentioned before, we're not ready to branch outside of this region because our service uh, team and our uh, deal network is still in the progressing stages, but we're looking forward to announcing some expansion outside of this area this year. Very good. Now, listen, Kyle, one of our uh, um, viewers, has just asked the four and a half thousand nautical mile range. What speed is that at? That's at around eight knots, Greg. Okay. Uh, uh, you can achieve that at ten knots if you do a fuel uh, tank upgrade, where we can expand the the, the fuel to five thousand litres aside, and that'll uh, to give coal your fuel burn coal in. And average conditions is around 42 uh, litres combined um, uh, an hour at 10 knots. So that, that's full load. Uh, you know, if you've got a dirty uh, bottom, if you haven't kept the hull clean, if you're pushing into 30 knots and, you know, a big sea, that, that could run out to 48, 47 uh, an hour at 10 knots. Uh, if you've got a following sea in a trade wind, you could improve that to 37, 38 litres a mile. And, you've, and your four and a half thousand at uh, eight knots, uh, Coles has asked, does that also leave some in reserve? 5% reserve and allows for the uh, generator consumption on board a, a 17.5 kVA. So if you yeah. go for bigger generators, we, we can do that calculation with our team and give you a very reliable range based on the setup of your boat. Yeah, understood. Okay, and then um, just have another question here. Um, where can we see the boats in person? Look, uh, at the moment, uh, we've got uh, the 70 on the Gold Coast uh, is available. This boat will be traveling up and down the Great Barrier Reef in Queensland. Uh, the owners are uh, are not new owners with us. We've built a number of boats for them. So uh, in, in other brands in the past, so they're very welcoming to show anyone the boat. They love their boat and they love showing it off. So they're very uh, welcoming for anyone to come and have a look at this boat in Queensland at any time. They'll drop into a port anywhere between here and the top of uh, the uh, Barry Reef, Lizard Island, Cooktown in that area. The 50, the next 50 arriving will be here on the Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia, uh, middle of August this year uh, to, for inspection if anyone would like to see that boat. And the first 60 will arrive as well in uh, the Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia around March next year. The reason this is a hub for us, it's our Australian Service Centre, Commissioning Centre, and it's where we manage and operate all of our service team uh, from for the uh, Pacific and Southeast Asia region. Very yeah. good. Now, now listen, all the, oh, sorry, Marcus. I, I just wanted to add, Greg, that the 50 that we have arriving mid-August is, is available for sale. It's a stock boat, three cabin, and uh, if anybody wants any more information, they can uh, contact me. And then yeah, we, the reason uh, we, we didn't sell that boat, we've sold boats past that, is because we uh, wanted to, bring uh, a boat in for the boat shows in Australia this year. Uh, and of course, they've all been cancelled. So we, um, what a, you know, it's hard to keep control of a boat when you're launching a new brand. So that boat's been spec by our own team. It was to be shown at the Sydney Boat Show and it, uh, that was upcoming. And of course, that's been cancelled, as we all know, with COVID-19. So that boat uh, is really, we want to use it to show people sea trial, do some promotion and that boat is looking for a new home uh, in the later part of this year. So we're very uh, excited to show that boat to any interested uh, buyers. 
And now my understanding, Marcus, is that we, we haven't nailed down a date yet, but sometime in late September, early October, our plan is to do a sea trial day with that uh, 50 and also one of the MY range and a couple of the Fontaine Bajot sailing catamarans in Malula Bar. Is that? Yeah, that's right. That's what we're aiming for. Yeah. As you said, we haven't pinned the date down, but I think it'll be the first half of September um, yeah. where people can fly in and we can uh, treat people to actually uh, see what it feels like on the boat, out at sea, outside, in the yes. of, you know, on the East Coast in some weather, hopefully, and we can really um, show people what these boats are capable of. Now, one thing that's a shame is that this video presentation is we can't smell that yacht. Are you sitting on leather, gentlemen? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. it's uh, very nice. But again, freedom of choice with Elliot. You can have suede. You can have yeah. uh, vinyl. I doubt you would, but you can have, you know, uh, there, there's a great imitation leather that we use in a lot. It's an Italian, yeah. it's called Leatherette. Uh, fantastic products around the market. And it's amazing our buyers, they actually, a lot of them are bringing us products and saying, this is what I want on my countertops. This is what I've got in my home. I want this on my lounges. I want this, my mattresses. I mean, you choose your mattresses with Iliad. What density do you want? Uh, you know, spring or memory foams. Uh, what thickness do you want? It's, a, it's great working with each customer to deliver as close as uh, everything they want in a boat um, right through to, you know, as I say, to, to your boat speed. I mean, some people are looking at smaller motors to get longer range. And if that's something that uh, the other gentleman had, oh, a, yeah. on, uh, you know, we, we can do a smaller motor uh, with a bigger prop uh, that, that might give you a top speed of 15, 16 knots, but it could give you an exceptional range in that eight to 10 mile range. But we can do all these calculations with our team. Okay, so gentlemen, we're pretty close to finishing for today. It's been fantastic and uh, time-wise, it's, sort of, it's in keeping with uh, our previous webinars, so that's been fantastic. I just wanted to uh, ask any of our viewers, if, you, if you'd like to ask one final question or give any feedback, uh, we've got probably two or three more minutes before we'll be signing off for today. Uh, so we'll just wait those few minutes just to see if anyone does have any questions. And as, as you're doing right now, Rachel, great opportunity to just have one last look around the boat while we're finishing off. You can keep talking if you want, Vince. But uh, yeah, it's an impressive boat. And uh, Marcus and Mark, I, I thank you both for your efforts today. Marcus, you really did a great walkthrough there and explained the features and benefits of the Iliad in, in great detail. And, and, Mark, and Mark, it's really good to have your insights in terms of where the production and the development of the product is heading. Um, Thanks, Greg. And, uh, Greg, one thing I did also uh, forgot to mention, which uh, I think is a real critical uh, longevity uh, part of our construction, we build a full vinyl ester uh, hull. So it's all infused, uh, the latest technology, but we, uh, the full hull of these boats are vinyl ester, not partial. They're not a partial shell of vinyl ester. Uh, uh, so that's a the idea of this is to ensure absolute water tightness for you know for as long a life as the boat uh, will ever have and no one knows how long a composite boat's going to last uh, we've only been building composite boats for 30 40 years really so uh we're, we're hoping that iliad will be around when my kids are of my age and their kids are their age so that's that's our goal so we've had some feedback there from Kyle, who was asking a couple of questions earlier. He said, thanks for the presentation and answering my questions. Can't wait until you make it to the US. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Kyle we're coming, but uh, not as quick as he'd like, but uh, <laughs> we can look after him should he choose to buy. No worries. Well, listen, gentlemen, I think we'll wrap it up there for today. Uh, did you have anything else to add, Marcus? No, I just thank you everyone for um, logging in and I hope you enjoyed the tour, it's not the same as me being able to show you around in person, but I hope it's uh, given you a taste of uh, what, what the boat is and what it can offer. And a reminder that this presentation will be, uh, within the next week or two, will be up on our uh, multi hole Solutions YouTube channel. And in the meantime, uh, you can still log on if you have, if you want to share this with a friend or encourage someone else to come and have a look at the presentation today. Just uh, 
get them to go to the multi health solutions website and log on and uh, register and they can watch uh, this uh, presentation back again so rachel thank you excellent camera work as usual and uh, thank you okay well, okay i think we will take your time and uh, for your interest in iliad and we look forward to meeting you when the world returns to some normality again in the future all right, so on that note, we're going to end uh, today's discussion, our webinar. Thank you. Thanks.